let's now get a look at what I mean when I say multi-dimensional data. So let's suppose that we have a bunch of objects in space, a two-dimensional space, and we want to perform operations that will be spatial in nature on this set of objects. So for example, we might ask ourselves, how many objects are in this rectangle that I'm showing here? This is a what's called a 2D range search. It's also a generalization of that subset method that we saw earlier for one dimensional data. Another might be nearest again. What is the object that is closest to the space horse, right? Like it's this one, I can tell you. Um, but how would you do that in some kind of data structure? So ideally, we'd like to store all of this data in some kind of format, like a binary search tree or something else that allows more efficient approaches than just iterating over all the objects. That is, to find the nearest object to the space horse, we don't want to have to look at this point and 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 this point, just like we saw earlier, that if we want to find the smallest item in a set of numbers, if we have it stored in a binary search tree, we can avoid looking at most of the numbers. So we want to do something similar to that now in this two-dimensional space. Now, to get a sense of why this is a challenge, let's see what happens if we just try to build a binary search tree of two-dimensional data and get a sense for why that fails to allow us to efficiently implement things like 2D range search. So consider a very simple data set where we only have two objects, Mars and Earth. Mars is at position 1.0, 2.8 and Earth is at position 1.5, 1.6. Could we build a binary search tree of Mars and Earth? Sure, of course we can. Uh, but we need to, in that case, decide how you know one item is less than another. So if the only two attributes of these two objects that we care about are their position, well, if we use the X position to decide what's left, then we'd say that Mars is less than Earth. It's to the left of Earth. However, if we use Y position, well, then we'd say that Mars is greater than Earth because it's above Earth. And so, in effect, we end up with two possible trees. We have the X space tree, where Earth here uh, is to the, the, well, sorry, that Mars is to the left of Earth, or the Y base tree, where Mars is to the right of Earth. And here I'm assuming that we inserted Earth into the tree first. You can, of course, do the other trees where Mars gets inserted first, but that's not important to our discussion. If you insert Earth, then Mars, then if you use x location to decide what's less than, then Mars is going to be less. And if you use the y coordinate, you can just see the number, 2.8. It's bigger than 1.6. It'll be on the right. Okay. So that's how we could build a binary search tree. Now, that's fine. And if you want to, all you want to implement is contains, add, and delete, this will be totally fine. But as we'll see, if we try and implement nearest or a 2D range finding operation, well, they're going to end up being slow. You won't really being able you won't really be able to take into account where they lie in space. So, as a specific example that we can try, we're going to do what well, we called a, a range finding query earlier. And let's say we have the following data: we have A, B, C, D, E, and F at these points in space. And what I want to do is find all the points that have x coordinate less than negative one point five. In other words, things that lie in this green query rectangle which has a right boundary at x equal to negative 1.5, and it extends infinitely off, or sorry, it goes infinitely off in those directions. So as humans, we can easily identify the answer to the problem. I know that E and F are the points that are inside this rectangle. Now, if you were to try and implement something similar in Java, well, you have to have the points stored somewhere. So if we have the points stored in a list, like just a, an array list of points, then we'd have to iterate over the entire list. That's slow. It requires us to look at every single point. So what we're going to do now is see what happens when we try to store these points in a binary search tree ordered by x-coordinate, then y-coordinate. Okay. So first, let's look at what the x-coordinate binary search tree looks like. Now, you might consider pausing the video and making sure you can just build this tree no problem. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk through at least the first couple of steps, and then you can think about the rest. So if we start by inserting point A, which has coordinates minus one, minus one, it's going to be the root. Now, quick note, I'm using the word put here because I'm imagining now that I have a map between the coordinate and the letter. Remember that maps and sets are almost the same thing. Okay, so it's just, just saying associate the letter A with this point in space. If we then say put two comma two comma B, uh, what that does is since 
this point has x coordinate that is greater than minus one, notice the bolded first coordinates, it's going to go to the right of a. Then comes along c. Well, c's x coordinate is zero, and zero is greater than minus one. Oh, someone's already there. Okay, now zero is less than two. Ah, so we create a new node, and so forth. So in this case, I'm just building a plain old boring binary search tree. No rotations, no two, three trees, no red, black. This is just a, a, a vanilla binary search tree. So consider and make sure that you know where D, E, and F come from. And then I have another question for you. So remember that unlike humans, when our data structure is being manipulated or whenever a program is running, it only has this binary search tree. It can't see this picture. So how would you do it? How would you find all the points that have x coordinate less than negative 1.5? And as a challenge, how do you avoid looking at every node? And if you minimize the number of nodes you have to look at, which ones do you actually need to examine? I know this is a somewhat ill-defined question, but I hope it's clear what the intention is. Okay. So if we want to find every node, we'll start by looking at the root always, and we'll say, ah, A, yes, you belong. Now at that point, we have two children, and this is the important point, there's no reason to go over to this side because x has coordinate, or say a has x coordinate minus one. And so we know that nothing over here could possibly have an x coordinate that is less than negative 1.5. So we don't even need to look over there. So we repeat this process going down the left tree and we'll identify points, a, sorry, points e and f as being less than negative 1.5. And we don't have to look on this right side of the tree. So we just work our way down the tree, ignoring any options that are impossible, kind of like what we saw with nearest. And again, I know this is not pseudocode. This is just me saying in words roughly how you do it. But we can immediately see that we were able to avoid looking on this right side of the tree. There's no need to do it. Make sure that makes sense, because it's the most important point in this lecture. Now, this process of not looking at the entire tree, cutting off a search early, is often called pruning. And that just comes from the English word pruning, where you, know, you chop pieces off of plants. Same deal here, it's a tree, right? All right, now let's see what happens with Y coordinate. The whole goal here is to show you, you can't just build a binary search tree on X or Y. So in this case, if we build the Y oriented tree, we get a different binary search tree. Instead of having A, E, F as our left spine of the tree, now we have A and then E over here, but no F. Why? Well, because whenever we insert our root, here it is, it's the root. Now when we insert two comma two, since two is greater than minus one, these bolded numbers, it ends up on the right, just like before. Now with C, we end up having, again, the same structure, right? Same pattern, minus one, two, one. But now finally, when we get to D, something different happens. With D, because zero is greater than minus one, but it's less than two, but it's less than one, it ends up right here. So the tree is different, okay? So just make sure that makes sense before proceeding and maybe try drawing this tree from scratch. And so now if I ask that same exact question, how do we find all points with X coordinate less than negative 1.5? I'd like you to think about how would you find them in this binary search tree? Where are the points that have X coordinate less than minus 1.5? Is there some way to do some kind of pruning? Give it a shot. So it turns out there's just no way to do it. There's no way to prune this tree. The best we can do is look at the entire thing and find E and F. Maybe you've got some intuition for why that is the case because there's just no way at any point we could rule out one of the other sides. Our answers are on totally opposite ends of the tree. And so that's the best we can do. Now I have a different interpretation of what's going on here. In case you're like, well, why is pruning impossible here? Like I get that I couldn't do it when I tried it myself, but like what was it that was special here? Well, let's go back to the X-oriented tree. And I think this is just an interesting way of thinking about what's going on. So now what I'm showing you is the data in both the binary search tree format and in the original space at the same time. In the x-oriented tree, where we use the x-coordinate to decide who's less than or right, greater than, this root node, the a node, it splits the universe into a left-hand side and a right-hand side. All of these points have x less than minus 1, and all of these have x-coordinates greater than minus 1. And so crucially, what's interesting here is that this right-hand side does not intersect this query rectangle. The green box of things we want, it has nothing in common with the right-handed side of the universe, so there's no need to go there. Now, by contrast with the Y-oriented tree, we split the universe into a top and a bottom. And as we'll see here, both sides of this query rectangle, or sorry, the query rectangle intersects both sides of this universe. There's no way to prune this. 
right? We can't just say, oh, well, the rectangle's over there. We, we can't bother. We don't need to look. Now both sides intersect. Then we get down to B. Well, B, of course, splits the data into a top and a bottom relative to uh, Y equal 2. And again, both sides of the rectangle intersect this, sorry, the rectangle intersects both sides of the universe according to B. And so as a result, we again can't prune. So there's no possible pruning, and that happens for all of our data. All right, so just to sum that all up, what we saw is we can, of course, build a binary search tree that uses only the x or only the y coordinate of our data, and we can even support some queries efficiently. However, if we try to do a range finding operation that is concerned with the x coordinate, but our tree is built on the y coordinate, it's going to fail quite spectacularly. It's going to take forever. We're going to have to iterate over all points. Okay. So what we'll do next is we'll see a couple of different ideas for how we can generalize the idea of a binary search tree to take in to account the multidimensional na nature of our data.